We are a growing global movement of over 50,000 young people. The Youth and Landscapes Initiative was born when a group of forestry students and young agricultural professionals came together, recognizing the need to combine forces and give voice to youth working in landscapes around the world. Six years on, we are a thriving and diverse community offering workshops, mentorship, training, and networking. Whether online or in person, the Youth and Landscapes Initiative programs connect, support, and inspire young people to step into courageous leadership, a leadership that breaks barriers and brings people together to act differently. Join the community, be part of the change. Hello everyone, good morning. Welcome to the Youth Daily Show. My name is Renata Alvarenga and I'm from, calling from Brazil. On behalf of the Youth in Landscapes Initiative and the Global Landscapes Forum 2020, we are sending out a huge welcome to all of you to the Youth Daily Show. We're also sending you all our warmest wishes for health and safety during these challenging times of the COVID-19 pandemic. Today, we're gonna explore a little bit about the concept of sustainable diets and discover different perspectives on how to feed the world without eating the planet. How can we, as the youth, define sustainable food, as well as facilitate innovations and policies to include all three pillars of sustainability, which are the environmental, social, and financial pillars. In the next 30 minutes, you're gonna have the chance to listen to different voices of people from all around the world, sharing their ideas on what a sustainable diet is. We are also looking really forward to have an exciting debate between two passionate advocates, vegan food versus local food which is more sustainable. I'm really excited for this one. We also wanna hear from you, our audience. So please use the hashtag generation restoration and hashtag GLF bond 2020 and share on your social media. What's your favorite sustainable tip? And now just to start, I would like to invite you all to go on Slido and enter the code hashtag GLF bond 2020. That is GLF bond 2020 and click on youth and then let us know what's your preferred local source food or if you prefer plant-based diets. And without further ado, let's find out what our friends have to say. We have asked Aslak Homburg, the vice president of the Sami Council, Kaluki Paul Mutuku, regional coordinator of the Africa UN Group, and Dali Nolasco, a Nahua young activist leading Tierra Madre to share with us what a sustainable diet is for them. Päivi. Mulla on skuulalema aasla neljäs aaslat, lähe jonna saila neljäs aaslat. Nuorkänis tien uli eis eeret. What is a sustainable diet for me? Um, I, I eat salmon quite a lot. Uh, every week, almost every day. So it's a big part of my my sustainable diet is uh, that I, I eat uh, fish that I catch myself. I, I try to eat uh, local products as much as I can, so I don't buy any, any meat, um, but I, I exchange or work to get some uh, reindeer meat that is produced uh, um, in, in these uh, areas around me. And as you can see, this is a field behind me and there is like uh, 50 centimeters of snow there. So our growing season is very short. So we don't really grow, we are not farmers. So meat and fish is an uh, important part of our, our diets here. Para mí, una dieta sostenible es cuando los seres humanos se hacen responsables de su alimentación, cuando reconocemos el trabajo campesino, cuando valoramos los sabores que hay detrás de cada alimento, cuando disfrutamos con todo nuestro ser la conexión entre los sabores ancestrales y los sabores que ahora podemos disfrutar. No, 
Cuando nosotros aprendemos a sembrar nuestros alimentos significa que siempre vamos a tener que comer. Reconocer el trabajo campesino en el que producen el alimento. Por alimentos buenos, limpios For me, a sustainable diet implies a variety of plant or animal-based foods that are grown and sold locally, organically, with readily available local resources that do not necessarily negatively impact on the natural environment, on people and communities, and that does not negatively impact on biodiversity. So let us respect nature, let us respect indigenous and traditional foods, and let us embrace local season friendly food stuff that can help us cushion uh, from food insecurities and that can help our societies gain more food sovereignty going forward thank you amazing hope you all enjoyed this video and now i'd like to invite on stage the speakers of our first daily show I'll leave it now to Sylvia, Sylvia Abruscato, researcher at the European Forest Institute, to moderate the session, and also to our speakers, Emmanuel and Andrea, to inspire us all on the debate on sustainable diets. Thank you very much, Renata. I hope you can all hear me. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the first Youth Daily Show of GLF 2020. My name is Silvia and I'm a forestry researcher and a food lover. And today I will be your moderator for this exciting debate. Well, there is currently no legal definition of what sustainable food is. Although terms like organic, plant-based, fair trade are more defined and come often uh, with their own certification system, this can compared with other like agroecology, permaculture, or climate smart. Well, the central question for today is the following. Is sustainable food the same for everyone around the world? And also, what should we as consumers do if we want to have sustainable food? We, and I'm very happy to introduce to you Emmanuel Atamba, advocating for the plant-based, and Andrea Morales, advocating for food, um, for local food. Emmanuel, very, very excited to have you here with us today. So Emmanuel is a researcher and a policy analyst at the Route to Food, which is an initiative in Kenya, which promotes human rights to food. And you're also a sustainable agriculture speci specialist and a passionate vegan. My first question to you, Emmanuel, why would you say that plant-based or vegan is the most sustainable option. Yeah, uh, thank you very much, Sylvia, and uh, the organizers, and uh, thank you very much for having me. Um, I think my, um, I'll just base my, my argument, there are a lot of issues, but I'll just base my argument on, uh, on um, sustainable use of energy produced. And uh, by energy produced, I mean energy produced by plants. Uh, so animals don't create food or energy by themselves. But they use up energy that is originally produced by uh, by plants and uh, there's no any other way that food is produced other than the, the, the basic uh, process of photosynthesis uh, which is done by uh, by plants so then um, uh, what is most sustainable is the shortest chain between uh, the actual food production which is done by plants and the consumption that is done by us and of course other um, other species uh, on earth um, so, and uh, animals, um, you know, so basically using animals to produce, uh, to, to, to produce food is less efficient because then animals have to eat uh, the actual food, the real food that we need, and then now produce the food uh, that is now meat, milk, and eggs, uh, which is very inefficient because there's a lot of energy loss through that process. Um, for example, and then, uh, you know, if, if, for example, if someone is keeping cows, an example of cows very quickly, is um, you need 0.75 0 acres of highly productive land uh, to keep one cow uh, productively. And uh, that cow will be giving you 15 liters of milk or 0.6 kilos of meat uh, from one acre, that's per day. 
So is that even sustainable, for example, to, to spare one acre of very productive land just to produce 15 liters of milk or 0.6 kilos of meat? It is not sustainable. Um, there's a lot of um, a, a lot of data on uh, the resource constraint on land. There's a lot of um, research that has been done on water use efficiency, and we see that it's more sustainable, um, you know, to rely more on plant-based diets than animal, um, uh, basically than animal uh, uh, food or, or, or animal-based foods. Um, so uh, that's what I would say. And I've been vegan for two years, and um, and this is the motivation that made me make that decision. I feel uh, it's more sustainable to uh, to eat plant-based uh, food. Thank you very much, Emmanuel, for your inspiring response, which highlighted to us, I think, the importance of considering energy, water consumption, but also resources that we are using for the production of food that we eat every day. Well, now let me pass to Andrea, our next speaker. Andrea, I'm very happy to have you here with us. Um, Andrea is a biologist and a conservationist from El Salvador. Her current research um, focuses on the development of strategies to monitor the native uh, fauna species in El Salvador. Now, Andrea, my question is for you. Why would you say that choosing local food is the most sustainable option? Thank you, Silvia, and hola to everyone. I'm very glad to be here. Here well, today with all of you. Andrea, sorry, you're cracking a and little bit. I would like to start by saying the production. Oh, let's see if now the connection is much better. Okay. I can I can hear you. Go ahead. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> well, in this new COVID situation, we have to embrace this and just give a little bit. So I was saying like the current food production and consumption patterns are leading to an increase in the environmental impacts and reduce the resilience in our food system. Probably you have realized how our food sources are depending on non-accountable markets. However, don't worry, solution can be closer than we thought. Locally based diets offer us to contribute in different aspects from the economy to environmental issues in your place, but also globally. They support people and create bonds, which are very important characteristics of this movement. And during this session, I want to show you how locally based diets can improve the situation and bring solution to your table. So first, if you buy local products, the money you spend circulates in your community and this type of consumption empowers local job creation, most of the time more equally and fairly, new markets are created and investment is happening. Second, with a close relation with your farmers creating in this approach, it is possible to trace how the food was produced, which methods had been used, labor conditions, and how farmers compensate or trying to tackle possible environmental impacts. And in relation with this argument, the proximity that we have with our producers allow us to have a dialogue where we can request for implementation of more environmental friendly farming practices for example, natural pesticides or diversific crop diversification. And all of this at the end helps to contribute in having a healthy meat, but also a healthy planet. Thank you. Thank you very much, Andrea, for also over uh, seen this uh, technical issue and for your clear response, which actually highlighted the importance of being closer to the local producer as well as uh, demanding or claiming or searching for environmental friendly practices. Now, let me go a little bit deeper into the sustainability of vegan and local food. And I will ask you, Emmanuel, an, uh, the next question. Would you say, Emmanuel, that no vegan but local source diets are not sustainable? And why? The mic is yours. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Silvia. And um, yeah. Uh, there's no big difference um, uh, between uh, between uh, locally sourced and uh, you know um, uh, or not locally sourced uh, non-vegan food. Um, the impact of uh, all industrial animal production systems are very high, and uh, these systems are not sustainable. There are a lot of issues to do also with animal welfare, apart from basically the environmental sustainability of these systems. Um, there are a lot of questions about pollution. 
Um, and, and for example, let's uh, let me paint a picture of, um, of uh, non-vegan uh, locally sourced food. Um, where I live um, in Nairobi, the Nairobi metropolitan area, um, we have farmers who are doing zero grazing of, 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 dairy, of dairy cattle. They're keeping cows in very hostile conditions. Um, and uh, the most important thing here in this discussion is they have to bring um, hay and pasture and uh, grains from very far across the country to feed these animals. So you might be seeing the milking happening next to you and uh, you know, and you're given even the milk uh, with the warmth of the other, but it doesn't mean that the, that that this is this is a sustainable system. The impact of that production is being felt miles away. You know, there's uh, there's a lot of impact in terms of transportation of foods to these places. Also, um, animal production systems depend on plant production, um, so there can be no condition whatsoever anywhere in the world where you can't produce uh, plants or crops, and, but you can produce uh, animal products. It can never exist because these animals need to eat plants. So the fact that there are animals in these areas means that uh, plants can grow or that plants are being brought from somewhere else to feed these animals. So uh, again, the same question is, which is the shortest chain for us to get the nutrients that we need? It is to eat directly from the plants. Yeah. Thank you, Emmanuel, for the concise response that actually it reminds us the importance of the environmental impact of food production system. And also we need to take into account the transport of animal feed um, as a very important aspect. So now I would like to turn the floor uh, to Andrea, asking a, sim a very similar question to you, Andrea. Would you say that vegan diets, but not local sourced, are not sustainable? And why? Please. Thank you. Well, thanks to Emmanuel for pointing out some of the challenges that uh, food production has to focus nowadays. But what I do tell you today is like, if you think that switching to a vegan diet without considering the source of your product is sustainable, maybe you want to hear why you should be careful about it. Because the current food systems encourages countries to specialize their production causing that many countries now depend on imported, on imported goods to meet basic needs. Besides these, do the large capacity to bring or to our table products from everywhere, the risk that our vegetables, grains, and fruits are producing at the expenses of the environment and people's well-being is very high. And this is not only related with carbon footprint, which should be also considered, as Emmanuel pointed out, but when I think about vegan, no local based diets, what I see is deforestation, pesticide harming people and nature, and poverty and labor exploitations. And perhaps people will say like, yeah, let's uh, try to resolve this if we only demand sustainable forms of crop farming to our very, very far farmers. And still sometimes communicated with distant farmers is challenging. There is sometimes the language barriers Sometimes we even don't know who is producing our food. And at the end, if we consider the proximity farmers, they are likely to hear you and pay more attention because their sales basically depend on you and their community in this approach. So if you choose vegan, which is already good option, please don't forget to choose local as well. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you, Andrea, again for the detailed response. And actually then we understood that we need to consider where our food is come from and from whom our food is produced. Well, I think uh, you two are, are right, very, very um, important arguments. And now I actually would like to check our slide and what our audience is um, asking you and us to, to, debate, to discuss today. So let me now turn into this uh, technology uh, um, world. And I will start with the first um, question coming from the audience. Um, I would like to read it out and then uh, Andrea or Emmanuel, you, one of you will start. So what are, what are the best ways to educate people on sustainable diets and the most effective way to make it more attractive to people so they can shift or start shifting their nutrition behaviors? I think, uh, Andrea, you look uh, pretty okay on starting, yeah? Yeah, thank you. Well, 
I will I will feel very identified with that question because I'm from a tropical country <laughs> and from the last three years I have moved I moved to Germany and of course I miss to eat the food that, that the food that I'm used to all my life but however when you get start to look around these problems and look at start to see short uh, documentaries and get informed about how these food systems are working you are start to be aware and that's a first step like we should spread this information make it easily understandable and also make it multilingual multi-language because at the end all of this information is out there but sometimes it has to reach all the canals and i don't know if you can remember the second part of the question Yes, of course, it was also um, a matter of how to make it more attractive to people so they can start to then shift their nutrition behavior. But I think your point of also translating and providing information which are available in different languages and in different platform is also a key point, correct? So maybe, Emmanuel, uh, could you also comment on that? What, what, is, what is your point of view on this uh, a matter of education? How do we educate and we transmit this knowledge to people so they are understandable for everybody? Yeah, no, I, I, I agree with uh, with Andrea 100% that uh, people need to be informed and, and, and people need to be reached in the languages they can understand in the formats that they can they can engage with uh, so that they understand uh, about these issues. Um, but also generally, um, uh, there's need, this need for transparency. Uh, for example, uh, people who buy packed meat in, uh, in, in, you know, in butcheries or in supermarkets, don't know where this meat is coming from. They don't know the impact of this kind of system on the environment. Um, and and the, the, the companies that are running these businesses, the people that are running these businesses, the governments that you know where these businesses are run and operated under, you know, are not uh, sharing um, information transparently. There is a lot of deception, for example, um, you know, about uh, about the nutritional value of some of these foods. Um, uh, for example, um, there's a bit of uh, there's a lot of disconnect in terms of in terms of what is being said as nutritious versus the actual nutritional benefits of this of some of this food. So when people know and when it's transparent that, for example, you can live without eating animal products, that uh, you know you you don't need milk to have strong teeth. This is something that uh, this is a, a theory that is uh, peddled everywhere. So if people know that they can live without, they can have their teeth without drinking milk, you know, then they can make the choice. But, you know, they are scared because they think they will lose all their teeth if they don't take milk. But uh, that transparency is very important. Thank you, Manu. That's a very good point. Transparency, dialogues, and also um, understanding where the food is coming from. So a dialogue also directly with our, with our seller or with, with whom we are we're getting our food from. And also understanding the, 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 um, when we are not, uh, for example, consuming specific um, elements, how can we then maybe compensate it? But then this is also a very good point. And I have another question which ca uh, came up from, from the audience for you, Emmanuel. So what is it like to be vegan in a country which is um, where, the, where the meat consumption is pretty high it's because you are from Kenya? Maybe you can comment on that. Uh, that would be very interesting to hear. Yeah, um, I've been I've been vegan now for uh, close to two years now. Um, yeah, hundred percent vegan, and um, it's not easy culturally. First of all, uh, people in Kenya eat a lot of meat, and uh, when you don't, when you stop eating meat, uh, the first suspicion is that you are sick, and you have to explain to everyone every time uh, that you don't have diabetes or you have not been told by the doctor not to stop eating meat. Uh, for example, so there is a there is a big a, a big cultural barrier. Uh, for people to make uh, such dietary choices. Um, my children, for example, you know, haven't uh, gone vegan uh, because of that. Um, you know, and, 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 and every time they get an opportunity to eat meat, uh, maybe in parties, etc., you know, they eat a lot of it because, you know, generally uh, they would eat less uh, when I'm around. And that, that, that disconnect in terms of, in terms of uh, the science of, 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 of diet and, and, and the cultural um, you know, the cultural beliefs and the cultural uh, preferences of communities here is, 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 is very, it's very tricky. In terms of, in terms of uh, getting food that I need, there are a lot of parcels that I have access to, um, you know, a lot of vegetables. Um, this is also like, a, this is a tropical climate, you know, um, a lot of fruits and, 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 and in terms of meeting my dietary needs, uh, that one is very, it's very easy, but now fitting into 
a culture, for example, that requires you to eat meat every time there's a celebration um, is, is, is what is tricky. But I'm, and I'm also influencing people around me to at least reduce the amount of meat that they're eating. Uh, this is something positive that is coming out of it. Every time you engage with people, um, someone comes again and says, I, I've actually now reduced the amount of meat. I have not gone 100% vegan, but I've seen the point and I'm reducing the amount of meat I'm eating. Thanks, Emmanuel. This is a very good point. So the culture background accounts, of course, but also the, the, the dialogue also with, with other people and are raising awareness of how we're eating, how can we improve our dietary choices. Then I, I would have um, another question for Andrea. Maybe I would start with you. So Andrea, do you think that there is a way to keep, to keep meat in our diets, but ensure that it's still a sustainable diet? Do you have a comment on that maybe? That would be interesting to know from your point of view. Thanks. Yeah, it's a very interesting question. I think sometimes it can be difficult, depends where you live. For example, in my home city, in my country, there are some people who raise chickens very uh, ecological way, like a small uh, parcel with chickens and so on. And that is the thing, like sometimes switching to this kind of movement requires this effort to look for the information, look for the places, ask for recommendation, ask for other people who are already involved. So I would say like the solutions out there, we have to also be creative. We have to see like this opportunity for many entrepreneurs around that you can bring this also and embrace it. And as Emmanuel pointed out, like, also, uh, vegan diets are important into sustainability. So I would say, like, it still can be challenged, but we can keep doing. And as much people require, we will see more of these opportunities more easy, uh, easily uh, to get access. Thanks, Andrea. That's also a very good point. Creativity and try to discover and also dialogue with people around us in order to find uh, maybe the better solution based on our choices, which uh, should be more sustainable then. Emmanuel, uh, a quick answer also from your side. Do you think there, there is then a way to consuming meat and being also uh, and having more some more sustainable diet from, from your point of view that you're trying also to uh, create this interaction with your um, with your people, with the people around you about this topic? It might be interesting to hear your opinion as well, please. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now more um, like every day, every day I look at these issues. Uh, every day I look at issues of, um, you know, sustainability and animal production systems. I am convinced uh, that, uh, you know, it's not fair to, first of all, to eat, uh, to eat meat. It's not sustainable. Um, um, and, and it doesn't, it, you know, I'm, I'm convinced that it's not necessary. It's not a necessary way for us to feed ourselves. Um, but of course, um, with all the barriers and we, you know, people have the, the, the choices to make. And our society uh, has made it uh, that it's normal to eat meat. So it's abnormal to be vegan, yeah? And uh, I have to answer the questions for my daughter every day why I don't eat meat, yeah? The good thing she was young, so she couldn't see when I was eating meat before I became vegan. But I keep insisting that it's not, um, it's not a sustainable system. And um, maybe the only way for, 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 people to, for people to have an honest conversation is to look holistically at the whole system, to look at all issues of animal welfare, all issues of, uh, of, of, of resources used. And then, um, then people can decide how much meat can we eat. The doctors, um, Sylvia, the doctors say that you eat uh, 50 grams of meat a day. Yeah, for your health. It's like telling you don't eat meat, but saying it in a nice way. Yeah, because what is 50 grams? Uh, thanks, Emmanuel. This was a very good example. Well, people, I would love to stay here with you and speak for hours, but I think we are now trying to wrap up. And thanks for the point and the um, exchange we have with this QA with our audience. Thanks also for the audience to share with us your thoughts. No, well, let me let me ask you a final sentence, very concise, because we are then um, considering our talk, we understood that both movements, the vegan and the local food one, advocate for a change in the current food system. We want to include environmental and socioeconomic parameters in it. So what is the one advice you would give to our audience today if they want to move forward to a more sustainable diet? Andrea, I start with you, please. The mic is yours. Thanks. Thank you. 
Well, to all of you who are listening here and those that are listen, listen this before, maybe switching to a more sustainable diet is as powerful as any other movement fighting for environment, labor rights, and justice. Your contribution will help to change this unfair food system into a better one. So let's do it now. Thank you, Andrea. Emmanuel, what would you say? No, I think um, it's important for us to recognize that uh, what is on your plate, um, no doubt, affects what is on the farms, and what is on the farms is what is on earth. So if what is on, is on our plate is not sustainable, then what is on our farms is not sustainable, and therefore what is on, on earth is not sustainable. Um, one meal can make a big difference. One decision to change from, uh, from the food you crave for, uh, which might not be sustainable, can make a big difference. And um, when you choose vegan, you also consider all these other issues, uh, issues of animal, uh, not, not even animal welfare, issues of uh, welfare of farmers, issues of uh, welfare of uh, people working on farms, as Andrea has pointed out, it's important uh, to choose sustainable all through. It's not about one part and leaving out the other part. Uh, so when you choose sustainable and when you consciously think about the food that you eat and the impact that it has on other people, on the environment, on earth, then uh, you live a more peaceful life. It's a very simple, simple thing to do. And there are people out there who can support you, reach out. If you want to be vegan, just reach out and say, I want to be vegan and I need support. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you both of you for the inspiring talks. I have, I have and we have learned a lot today. And I think a good and important take off message for all of us is that is necessary that we, we are aware of what we are eating starting from today. Should we reflect also upon how would we integrate vegan and local food based movement? Well, I believe that we need a conscious consumption. So thank you all of you for being here with us today in this um, very inspiring and interesting debate. But before passing the mic to Renata, let me ask you to stay here, do not disconnect, but watch with us the next video. We're gonna watch a video from EAT, a science-based global platform for food system transformation. The EAT Lancet Commission on Food, Planet and Health brought together 37 leading scientists from across the globe to answer this question. Can healthy food save the planet? Thank you. You know the saying, you are what you eat. But the way we currently eat is in fact ruining our health, the health of others and that of the planet. Unhealthy food is now deadlier than alcohol, drug and tobacco use combined. 2.1 billion people are overweight, yet we eat more sugar, fat and red meat than ever. Still, 821 million go to bed hungry every night. On top of that, our food is the main cause behind species extinction and a third of all global greenhouse gas emissions. So, can we feed a growing population without destroying the planet and ourselves? Science had no clear answer to this question. That's why EAT gathered 37 of the world's best scientists to determine what a healthy and sustainable diet is and how to get there. The result is the EAT Lancet Commission, a scientific blueprint for a healthy and sustainable future. If we change the way we produce, consume, transport and waste food, we can feed everyone a healthy diet while improving the health of our planet. What does this look like? Meat can stay on our plate, but plants need to be the new main course. We should eat a huge variety of fruits and vegetables and a low amount of meat, dairy and seafood. We should choose unsaturated fats and stay away from refined grains, highly processed foods and added sugars. And we have no food to waste. It will take huge changes, but following this plan will lower our risk of cancer, strokes and diabetes. It could help avoid 11 million adult deaths per year. In fact, consuming and producing food more efficiently and mindfully will help to keep our planet flourishing. We have an answer now. We know the right course for a better future. It's on us to actually take that step. Our food can be the key to solving the biggest challenges we face. Food really can fix it.
Amazing. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, once again, uh, I just want to um, thank once again on behalf of the Youth in Landscapes and the Global Landscapes Forum. I want to thank Sylvia, Andrea, and Emmanuel for their really inspiring talk. I don't know about you all, but I'm definitely very inspired um, to be a more conscious consumer. Uh, being a vegetarian myself, it's nice to think about local source foods and plant-based diets from now on. Um, it's, it's also really amazing to see that you're, you're all really willing to learn from each other uh, and not just advocate for what you believe in. So I'm really inspired. Um, so I just want to go back to the Slido results that I mentioned in the beginning of um, this session, just to see how we're doing in terms of local source foods or plant-based diets, if we can get that on the screen, that would be really amazing. We have that. If not, we can definitely comment later. Um, I think, oh, I think it's going now. Amazing. Awesome. So let's see. So the question on Slido was, are you a local source food or a plant-based diet advocator? Uh, I see that the big majority says, no transportation for my fruit, local source is the way forward. Uh, and 29% said, love plants, veganism is the way forward. So I see there's definitely some lenience to one side rather than the other, uh, but it's quite changing, uh, I see live. So it's interesting to know that maybe after this uh, youth session, uh, your opinions on uh, local source foods or a plant-based diet has maybe changed uh, from one side to another. So. It's, I think it's nice for us to keep these conversations going and uh, keep the debate on this really, really important issue that is um, advocating for sustainable food. So that's a wrap for day one of the Youth Daily Show. Uh, we really hope that you enjoyed that as much as we did. Uh, I think it was a really, really great discussion. And again, don't forget to continue sharing your thoughts about the event on social media. And please, if you do, use the hashtags Generation Restoration and hashtag GLFBond 2020. Uh, and thank you so much for joining. It was really a pleasure to have all of you here today. 